using dying nature to save living nature. It sounds impossible, doesn't it? But after every land restoration project failed, Chad, a country where 60% of its land is dead desert, decided to try something new. With just $7 million and small pits appearing all over the desert, something began to change. What kind of pits are these who dug them? And why did just a few shallow holes make the sand retreat, grass grow, and water stay? Let's find out right now. Take a look at Chad. It's bigger than Texas and California combined. Yet 60% of it is the Sahara Desert, the hottest desert on Earth. And it gets worse. The other 30% is on the verge of turning into desert too. Every year, the Sahara creeps southward like a giant silent grinder swallowing up dozens of miles. Can you hear it? The ground cracks underfoot like dried fish scales. Rivers run dry. Villages are abandoned. Sunlight pours down on empty rooftops where no one returns. Lake Chad, once the lifeblood for millions, has shrunk to about one-tenth of its size since the 1960s. Pumping water, sowing seeds, building windbreaks. Every artificial project failed, so Chad chose a strange path using nature to save nature. Now meet our main character, the scimitar-horned Oryx. Once found all across North Africa, this large antelope has long curved horns, like swords. Its body is strong, its coat silvery white to reflect the sun, and its horns curve like a warrior's blade. In 115 degree heat, it doesn't sweat. Instead, it raises its body temperature to conserve water. It uses its hooves and nose to dig deep into the sand, searching for roots and tubers, the only things that can keep it alive, where almost nothing survives. But tragedy struck. In the year 2000, the oryx was officially declared extinct in the wild by the IUCN. But that wasn't entirely true. Why did such a tough animal disappear, as always? Because of people. Since the 1950s, herds of oryx were hunted relentlessly. A perfect pair of horns could bring several months of wages for a farmer, a luxury item in Europe and the Middle East. Their hides were made into drums. Their meat became a delicacy. When rifles and trucks replaced bows and arrows, entire herds could be wiped out in just a few hours. Then came agriculture. People brought livestock to the grasslands. Oryx had nowhere to hide, no water to drink. Each drought killed thousands, their bodies drying out in the burning sand. From the 1970s to the 1990s, war broke out in Chad and Niger. Gunfire drowned out the sound of their hooves. Poachers roamed the abandoned reserves. By the end of the 20th century, no one saw Oryx anymore. They vanished, as if they had never existed. After that, the desert spread faster than ever. It might sound unrelated a lost antelope and a giant sandstorm, but when the Oryx vanished, the Sahara's biological shield vanished too. No more digging. No more moist topsoil. No more grass to hold the earth together. Scientists warned, without a biological solution, the Central Sahel could vanish from the agricultural map within a few decades. In 2016, Chad's government teamed up with the Sahara Conservation Fund and the Environment Agency of Abu Dhabi to launch the scimitar-horned Oryx reintroduction program. It sounds simple, bring the Oryx back, but it became one of the world's most ambitious and expensive conservation efforts. More than 70 international experts from the United States, France, the United Kingdom, and the United Arab Emirates joined local teams at the Wadi Rime Wadi Achim Reserve. The reserve spans 30,000 square miles larger than Ireland. $7 million were invested in the first phase to build weather stations, satellite monitoring centers, and an acclimation camp where Oryx could learn to survive the harsh desert fine food avoid predators, and move in herds. In March 2016-21, Oryx were flown from Abu Dhabi on special cargo planes. Each was fitted with a GPS collar worth over $2,000. It tracked location heart rate and temperature through the Iridium satellite system. Just six months later, a miracle. The first calf was born in the wildlife had returned after more than 30 years of extinction. 
In 2017-14, more Oryx were released expanding their range to over 1,200 square miles. By 2023, more than 350 Oryx had been reintroduced. The wild population surpassed 500, with over 150 born naturally. The IUCN officially changed the Oryx's status from extinct in the wild to endangered. But then silence. Within months, a third of them had died. This time, not because of people. The Sahara's heat is merciless. By day, temperatures rise above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot winds blow like a furnace. Some calves collapsed in the sand, the ground so hot it burned their collars. Others were dragged away at night by jackals, leaving only dark blood circles in the sand and a blinking red signal under a starry sky. Yet the team didn't give up. They dug artificial wells dozens of yards deep to bring water to the desert's heart. They moved the release zone southward where grass still grew. They expanded the camp and trained the oryx to find water avoid the sun and live by night. Step by step, survival rose from 65% to 90%, but every number had a cost dozens of lives lost in the sand. As herds began to roam again, a beautiful chain reaction started. It began with a simple dig from the oryx's nose. That small act opened up the soil. Air rushed in. Moisture seeped down. When the rains came, water stayed. Then came life. When the oryx lay down in 120-degree heat, its heavy body made small pits. When it rained, these pits held every drop forming tiny oases under the burning sun. Just by resting, the oryx created shelters for grass frogs and insects, the first signs of life returning to dead land. As herds moved, seeds stuck to their fur and fell everywhere. A herd of 30 could spread 500 seeds a day. Even if only 5% took root, the land would start turning green. Their droppings rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium brought nutrients back to the soil. Microbes returned, roots took hold. The ground began to breathe again. Even their wide hooves helped seal moisture in instead of destroying it. But this revival didn't start in the desert. It began in freezing labs at minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. At the Smithsonian Institute in the United States, scientists developed artificial insemination without anesthesia. Because oryx weigh over 450 pounds, anesthesia could cause deadly heat shock. The new process was safe fast and raised success rates to over 70% a breakthrough in conservation. Sperm from 120 oryx stored in liquid nitrogen was shipped from the United States, France, and Abu Dhabi to Chad. This restored genetic diversity to over 90% of the original wild population. It helped the species avoid inbreeding and adapt better to harsh environments. More importantly, this technology reduced transport costs by up to 80%. It opened a new era of global conservation where life can travel thousands of miles across deserts inside a single tube of liquid nitrogen. A Smithsonian scientist said it best, if the oryx is the warrior of the desert, we're just the ones giving it back its sword. The miracle didn't stop in Chad. After success in Wadi Rimei Wadi, Ashim Niger began reintroductions in Termit and Tintuma, an area over 37,000 square miles. In 2021, the first oryx returned there starting a new wave of recovery. In Tunisia, the journey began earlier in 1985. By 2022, more than 210 oryx lived freely at Bu Hedma, and City Tui reserves the most stable herd in North Africa. Many share genes from the same Smithsonian and Abu Dhabi programs, linking herds thousands of miles apart. Morocco and Algeria are next, restoring herds in Hagar and Dra Tafilalet. Experts hope that by 2030, the entire Sahara Belt will reconnect, allowing Oryx to migrate freely again for the first time in 50 years. And it's not just the Oryx. In 2023, Chad released 10 Adax, another rare desert antelope into the Entity Reserve. 
It was the first time in three decades these animals had walked there. This isn't just a biological project, it's a symbol of hope. It proves that nature, no matter how damaged, can heal itself if we give it space. The Smithsonian later called Chad a model for Sahelian ecological restoration. It joined the ranks of Yellowstone's wolves and Antarctica's seals' global icons of rewilding. As the Sahara's sunset paints the dunes, red herds of oryx run across land once declared dead. Each dust cloud rises like the desert's warm breath. Life has returned not by magic, but by faith. Faith that nature doesn't need saving, it only needs to be left alone and given back what we took away. If you believe every creature deserves a second chance, share your thoughts below and subscribe for more stories of revival where people and nature start over together.